Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. You either love it, you hate it, or you're somewhere in the big spectrum in the middle where you think there are a lot of cool things, there are some not so good things, but you can appreciate the things that it does offer that are enjoyable. Today we are breaking down 10 sets and associated figures that we would like to see if Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power was adapted into Lego. Yeah, guys, don't blame me if this list is bad. This was all <laughs> Daniel Lewa's idea, his brainchild. So let's dive into the list and see what his 10th great idea is. Two okay. boats. Congratulations, Daniel Lewa. We've had this in the Vikings theme for 1957, bro. The Numenorean ships. I think these have a very characteristic design, especially for the sails. These have a really nice shaping to them, and I think it'd be cool to have these in Lego form. The characters we could see could include Isildur, Elendil, and or Valendil, among others, just because they're key characters. All right, what's your next brand new idea? Oh, <laughs> guys, this is the problem. Is they didn't come up with any original ideas. This looks like Helm's Deep Part 2. Like, yeah. It's not supposed to be exactly the same or anything, but this is the Siege of Eregion from Season 2. This is a very cool scene. It actually is a battle that lasts like almost three episodes. Pretty pivotal in showing like huge battle of orcs versus a huge battle of elves. The most interesting thing that goes on in this battle is not even the battle itself, but is interaction between Celebrimbor and Anatar and Adar and Galadriel on each side. But the battle itself is fine. But it would be awesome to see Elrond and or Gil-galad in battle form as well as Adar. Guys, comment if you want Adar in minifigure form. Next pick up next is the Celestial Yellow tree from lord of the rings this does take place in rivendale so this goes to show how Mat Mathusala has not seen the show this actually takes place in linden and linden is, utah yeah the same thing uh, this tree has been afflicted with a curse and so you could actually potentially get two sets of leaves just like the deku tree set where you have the black leaves or the the yellow leaves or just no leaves at all because that's what needed to be healed by the rings of power it's more of just a figure pack you get a nice tree display good for autumn displays specifically and you could get some great figures gil galad kirden and galadriel all with their different colored rings hopefully okay now we are cooking the elf forge literally cooking up rings the whole the best aspect of this whole season is the dynamic between celebrimbor and anatar aka Sauron spoilers, in the Forge of Eregion. And so it would be amazing just to have a Forge diorama or display because that's the whole place where the rings are made. Like that's the most important location in the whole show. <laughs> so it'd be awesome to have that. And you could get Celebrimbor, Merdania, and Anatar, of course. Okay, this goes back to season one. This is the Tower of Ostirith. Pardon my uh, Middle Earth pronunciation or something like that but this is the watchtower of the elves as they're watching over the southlands and the, the realms of men and it's a very important location because the huge final battle of season one takes place here and this dam breaks essentially creating mount doom which is pretty critical so uh whether or not you consider these things canon or not this is still a very nice looking tower and you could get uh characters like bronwyn arondir or waldrig the worst are these crazy picks so far matt or, or would you get any of i these? mean i mean to find crazy picks i mean a tower a tree a forge <laughs> i mean i get it i think early if you're a fan of the show i mean to me it seems mm. like uh kind of like a star wars ahsoka situation where yeah you could get this tower like ahsoka got a gray slab with a minifigure pack Sure. That's part of the problem with these big budget TV shows is so much of the action just takes place in these little tiny zones. The, the way it, dialogue. it would just be like if they could make it appeal to the Lord of the Rings trilogy fans, like if it looked Lord of the Rings generic enough, which I think it does because they just want to go off the symbolism of the original trilogy to make you feel nostalgic about this show. That's how they could actually sell sets is you get more orcs, get more elves. Yes. 100%, especially the orc army building potential, that would loop everybody in. Speaking of dope figures, the Barrow Whites are really cool. Their scene was a bit rushed and they didn't have as much to do as I would have liked, but basically a spooky graveyard setting in a spooky forest with these spooky undead guys. That'd be pretty uh, fun to have. Okay, this season has had a lot of different cool creatures including this uh, nameless thing, as Arundir calls it, as well as some Ents. Having this kind of forest setting where these things take place would be pretty nice, especially getting buildable Ents, which could appeal to all Lord of the Rings fans. 
And then, of course, it'd be cool to see Arandir, who has a great armor piece, and Estrid and Theo, which, you know, whatever, but they're important. This looks like something straight out of Black Myth Wukong. Ah, uh, yes. The Ginger Hut. Up next, we have the Ginger Hut. <laughs> it literally is. I just Tom Bombadil. Just Tom Bombadil's house. Hey, if we can get a Shire set maybe next year, that's, you know, it's just a, someone's little house. This is basically someone's little house, and that's all there is to it. But you could get Tom Bombadil in Lego form, and that would appeal to everybody, you know, especially if he had his actual book accurate outfit with like the blue coat and the boots and everything. That'd be awesome. And also the stranger who we just found out. Spoiler alert. But it's Gandalf. It's like Yoda appearing in the Acolyte. Spoilers. Another really cool creature is the underwater monster. It's called the worm. That judges Muriel, basically. It's just a really cool tentacled monster. Great figures that could go along with it are, of course, M Miriel and our Farazon. They have really cool costumes. Like I love all their outfits in the show. So seeing any of those in minifig form could be very useful for just, you know, fantastical minifig. This will be good for a one-off for Rings of Power because it's unique to Lord of the Rings. Like, you don't see a lot of underwater creatures for Lord of the Rings trilogy. Like, none come to mind. Like, more Star Wars-y. So that would be kind of cool. But would be even yeah. cooler is the Balrog. Balrog, yes. Something like this would appeal to everybody. And it, it's just funny how they made it look exactly the same nearly identical from the movies and the show. It would just be so cool to have this as a big buildable version. For the show version, you could get like King Durin, Narvi, Younger Durin, Disa, you know, some dwarf variety in Khazadum, which becomes Moria. Yeah, I know this is, the Rings of Power is controversial, but let's be honest. Even if all you got out of a theme like this was really dope outfits or armor pieces or things like that, or opportunities to build orc battle packs, that would be pretty great. And the best thing about Rings of Power is the soundtrack. And so while you're building, you could listen to the soundtrack and uh, everyone's happy. Daniel Lewa, we already have a Balrog <laughs> Lego set. Oh, you're right. How did I miss this? Got you. Hey, I don't get him often, but this time I got Daniel Lewa. So what do you guys think? Was Daniel Lewa cooking or was he not cooking anything with this list for the top 10 Rings of Power Lego sets? Is there any others that you think we should get? Or do you think we should even get any at all? Period. I don't know. Some of these Lego sets could be cool with new with new minifigures. So get that nostalgia bait for Lord of the Rings fans. I don't know. If anything, the best thing about having Rings of Power coming out right now is that there's just more hype about Lord of the Rings in general. And so it's just interesting. We've seen this resurgence. We did Rivendell, Abaradur. Now we're having a new anime movie of Lord of the Rings, War of the Rohirrim coming out in December. Like, you know, they're cooking with Lord of the Rings right now. And so it's awesome that we're just going to see more Lord of the Rings Lego in general. That's exciting. And it's awesome that we're going to see more and more channel members on the channel, such as Uncle Norman, Uncle Michael, Cesar, I'm Lidme, Richie Rage, MC Go, and Dr. Dan PhD, as well as Oliver J. the Ginger Lender. Wow, such great channel members. If you guys want to become a channel member, we'll reply to all of your comments. You'll get custom emojis, such as Daniel Awa Sun Wukong and Methuselah Dr. Doom. Spam those in the chat. Thanks so much for watching this awesome list crafted by Daniel Lewa. If you've made it this far in the video, put Bisharp in the comments below.